Welcome to Spring Roll 45066, Part 2. The TV News Magazine of Spring Roll, Ohio. On Part 2 of our May-June show, we visit Class 101, where owner Karen Lane DeRosa talks about the right way to get into college. The crew at Hedwood gives us a summer update, and guest host Don Wright visits Warren County Career Center staff to hear about construction behind the Spring Roll United Church of Christ. Returning to the schools, Carrie talks to two students who got to be legislators for a day and meets State Representative Scott Lips. Kim Loshi gives us an Art Fest preview. And on Meet Your Neighbor, we'll talk to Jason Bang, longtime resident and dear friend. Carrie and I are coming at you from the community room of the Spring Roll Municipal Building. And it's all happening right now on Spring Roll 45066, Part 2. Carrie and I are still coming at you, Part 2 at the Community Center at Spring Roll. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we have a very good show for part two, just like we had a very good show for part one. So, where are we going first? We are heading to Class 101, which is a newer business in Spring Row, which doesn't just help your student get ready for the college entrance exams, but also helps them kind of prepare the application, the essay, and help them decide, you know, what schools are best for me, what major is best for me. It's, it's really a, a fascinating business. We're gonna talk to Karen DeRosa about it. All right, Karen. Hmm? We are at Class 101 today with Karen DeRosa. Karen, thank you for inviting us to your new business. Thank you so much for coming. I, this is really neat. And, you know, Class 101 offers not just college test prep, but really something for all students. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, we are we're really not a test prep company because we have so many great test prep tutors in mm -hmm. our area so I'm really always confident when families come to me and they're looking for test prep I can make great referrals to so many other businesses in our area sure. and I am proud to do that because there's a number of them and they're great. Uh, test prep is one of 12 services we offer for college planning for families in our area. Wow. We work with students grades 9 through 12 mm -hmm. and I know that may sound a little strange so it's not for every ninth grader sure. uh, but ninth and 10th grade we're talking about what are you good at? What you want to take during your high school years that'll put you on a path towards your goals toward college and it's okay if you don't know yet sure you know we're also looking at providing job shadowing and Neat. looking at summer camp experiences and things like that for the younger students and then 11th and 12th grade we are helping them focus on choosing their college college tours we're helping with financial aid forms going after scholarships writing the college essays developing their resume you name it uh, we are working with our students to really own that process for a successful transition after high school that's really really fantastic mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about like what goes on on a daily basis at Class 101. I love this place. Uh, so I will meet with students throughout the day. Our, our, uh, right now I'm their only college planner, but we are bringing more staff on board to help with essay prep and test prep, uh, and eventually another college planner, I hope, down the road. So. One to one, we meet with most of our students uh, for about an hour to 75 minutes at a time. We are then, depending on where they are in the process, working with them. It might be on the disc and researching careers. It might be then taking the programs, researching colleges. Once we have the college list, it might be scheduling tours and researching scholarships. So any number of different tasks for an hour to 75 minutes at a time. With freshmen, we're meeting with them once a month. Okay. Sophomores every three weeks, juniors every two weeks, seniors weekly until all of their paperwork is in. Okay. Okay. That's phenomenal. So something, Class 101 isn't just for the honors student. No. Is that correct? Right. It's for a student who wants uh, help and guidance for their family, uh, who wants help and guidance approaching that successful transition after high school. So we have students uh, with learning disabilities. We have students on IEPs and 504s. And we mm -hmm. have straight A 4.0 36 students as well. So you've got something for everybody every Everybody in between. Yeah. You really do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Obviously, college entrance and admissions has been in the news lately. Yeah. You know, interesting story from our, you know, West Coast folks. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about how Class 101 is different. Oh, I would love to. Uh, you know, independent education consultants all over the country are different. Uh, the wealth and privilege have always been a part of college admissions. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a part of so much of our society, our world. Uh, so people say, you know, were you surprised by the Varsity Blues scandal? I wasn't. Right. I'm saddened by it. I'm saddened for the students that mm -hmm. didn't own that process themselves and that the parents thought they had to find another option, right? Mm -hmm. We are the, the opposite of that. Um, we're not about a shortcut in the back door. Right. We're about leveraging a student's strengths and finding that right fit for them and making sure that they 
they own this, that they, from the beginning, are part of choosing the major, choosing the schools, and they are directing their path. We're just helping them see all the deadlines and understand all the options. That's really what we do is we're providing that information to families. But yeah, the, uh, the scandal out there is it's harmful to everyone and it's really hurting um, the college's reputation, of course, as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Where there was already a doubt in mm -hmm. admissions, uh, that cloud has certainly gotten darker this year and that's unfortunate. If parents or students out there wanted to contact you and Class 101, how's the best way to do that? Uh, right through our website, there's a contact form. Okay. So www.class101.com slash Dayton OH South. Okay. Our phone number is 937-705-5113. And we're located right here in Springboro. So just stop by and see us. Yeah, on South Richards Run. Mm -hmm. And great parking available. Yes, easy we in, easy that. out. <laughs> we love that. Well, Karen, thank you so much for sharing Class 101 with us today. And I'm sure we'll be back to check in with you again. Oh, I would love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you. Hmm? Thanks, Karen, and best of luck with your new business. Well, we're going out and see what the gang of Heatherwood. We got Tom and we got Matt. We got Stacy. Let's see what's going on on our great golf course. Hmm? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, it's warm outside, and you know what that means? Party on the deck. Every Wednesday night, come out and see us. We have live entertainment, full bands, bourbon and cigar nights up on the upper deck. And this year, we have something different for you. We have a smoker. We'll be smoking brisket, hamburgers, chicken wings. Come out, you're gonna enjoy it. Also, if you want any banquets or wedding business, call Stacy here at the club, 937-748-3222 and ask for her and she'll be glad to set you up with your next event. Now over to you, Matt. Folks, you know what's coming up. It's Father's Day. What does every dad have way too much of already? It's this right here. So this year, we're gonna throw out the socks. You're gonna call me at Heatherwood. We're gonna get your dad fitted for some clubs that'll make him have way more fun playing golf. He will thank you for years. So make sure you give us a call. We'll put him through a full custom fitting. Find out what's really going to change his game for the better. Not only that, Dad can trade in his old clubs right here at Heatherwood. So we'll get him fixed up with the newest technology. Just give us a call, 937-748-3222. Another event I want to tell you about is our Hook and Nine tournament that's coming up on July 14th. This is going to be a really fun event. It'll be parents children what we'll do is you'll play a nine hole scramble at three o'clock after that at six o'clock we're going to do an hour and a half of fishing in our stocked ponds over on hole number four we're going to be out there weighing the fish to find out who the uh, big winner is as far as weight we'll also take pictures so you can't make up the length and then we're going to do a fish fry right afterwards up here at the clubhouse it's going to be a fun event for the whole family Really want to thank Field and Stream for being involved in that event as well. You can sign up for that by calling the Pro Shop as well. This time, I'm going to go ahead and send it back to the mayor. Hmm? Guess who's back? 9222, as he used to call himself, Merge. <laughs> the Merge Factor. Merge is back. Yeah, he did a special segment for Carrie and I out the Career Center. They are building a missionary behind United, Springboro United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's just a wonderful thing going in, and Don did a good job of putting that together. So let's go look at that clip. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate uh, coming out here to talk with what's going on now. Uh, I have uh, Terry Carlisle, who is a pastor at the United Church of Christ, and I have Steve Williamson, who is the, the builder Mm -hmm. um, carpentry teacher. Carpentry mm -hmm. teacher at the mm -hmm. Warren County Career Center. Mm -hmm. And then behind us right now are the students that are learning how to build buildings. And uh, there's a building under construction here on the property. And Terry, tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Well, I'd be delighted to, and thanks for having us today, Don, again. 
Uh, I'm the pastor of this church, and I guess by default, the pastor of that new building out there as well that Steve and his crew have been helping us with for the last year or so. Uh, we had a parsonage there. It was a residence years ago, then became a parsonage, then a storage area, uh, and then it just became kind of a nuisance. So we had the Career Center take that down for us. And we're going to build what we call a mission center there. And I'll say just a little bit more about that in a moment. Some of you will recognize me in this uh, look with Oktoberfest, I mean Oktoberfest hat on. <laughs> the reason we started this project, we knew it would cost us some money, even though the Career Center gives us uh, some free labor, so to speak. Costs us a lot of cookies, doesn't it, guys, to do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, we started Oktoberfest so that we could, in fact, fund this new mission center. And Oktoberfest will be in its seventh year this coming September, so we hope you'll all come out to that. But we wanted to do something, instead of always sending our church kids out to other places to do missions, like Georgia, Iowa, we've even been to Alaska, this year's West Virginia, to do flood relief and missions, we thought we'd like to invite other schools, schools, churches, groups, adults, and kids alike to come to Springboro and help us with projects that we might do as mission projects, not just religion, but outreach the same as the Lord did when he walked this earth. So we started a festival to raise money to build a mission center, and we hope it'll kind of move out from that. We're trying to start a community committee now, Don, mm -hmm. to sit with us and say, how can we best use that building as a, an outreach in this community, not just for the church, but for the community. So that's how it got started. So, and now Steve is involved. You are the director of construction mm -hmm. at the Warren County Career Center. Mm -hmm. We have a construction, it's a construction committee at, at school. It's made up of electrical class, a heavy equipment class, um, an HVAC class, and then carpentry. Um, and we all work together on um, our building projects. This is mm -hmm. actually my 22nd year of, of doing projects, hands-on projects. Students learn best when they're, we're, they're actually doing it. We, uh, yes. we spend some time in the lab um, learning procedures and safety procedures, but um, most of our projects have always been off-site like this. Right. Yeah. Well, I met you several times on yeah. previous shows, building here, there, and everywhere. Sure. How many do you have in the class right now? In, in this uh, junior class, we have 13, and then the senior class, um, who comes in the afternoons, we have nine. Terry. The project, it's underway right now. This is 2019. When are you anticipating completion? Well, just about one year from now, maybe a year and a month from now, we're end of uh, spring 2020, we should have it all done, shouldn't we, Steve? Yes. May, May the 15th of 2020 is when we plan to hand over the keys. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, I understand behind us here, mm -hmm. you have an architect or a, a girl that wants to be an architect. She does. Where? Yes. There she is right behind you, yeah. Steve. Yeah. And so how is this experience for you? I thought it would be very important for me to have this this part of the this side of it, the, mm. the construction part of it, because it'll help me when I'm drawing out plans. Sure. And so my, my end goal is to actually be able to start my own business with buying properties. And so that way I'll have all the skills to buy like buy them and then fix them up and resell them. Well, I got the superintendent of Warren County Career Center in here. Great guy. He's, he's into this. He loves this type of thing, and he's been involved in it. He loves taking selfies of the kids and him working together and keeping them up to date with pictures and what's going on, right? Absolutely. You know, what a great program. What a great opportunity for our students. It takes great leadership from our instructors to do things like this. We all know that students learn better when they have hands-on activities. So what a great activity. We love giving back to the community. And, uh, you know, I love staying connected with the programs and the students. Right. Thank you. We appreciate, thank your, you. appreciate your, your help, your effort. Thank you. And thank you, you guys, yep. all of you. Great Pleasure. partnership. Good. Mayor, back to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, Don, you haven't lost a step. 15 years, you've still got it. And Harry and I do appreciate you having a special segment on 45066. Well, our state rep, Scott Lips. Yes, Scott is kind of hosting an essay contest for our fourth grade students. And in fact, it's fourth grade students throughout Warren County. It's uh, to write a essay about a famous Ohioan in history. They, the students were given a list of people to pick from and then they had to write an essay about it. We are talking to two of our fourth graders who entered the contest and their teacher, Mrs. Prophet. 
And the students were even treated to Scott Lips visiting their classroom. That's pretty cool. It is State really State rep neat. comes in, it's good. Yeah, really neat. Shall we go check it out? Good. All right, we are at Dennis Elementary today in Mrs. Prophet's classroom talking to students Casey and Lily about an essay contest they recently entered. Kelly, thank you for having us in your classroom today. Sure, thanks for coming. Well, tell We're us a excited. little bit about the Legislator for a Day contest, if you would. Okay, this is a contest. I received a letter um, in my mailbox, and um, it was from our state government, and we study state government in class. Mm -hmm. And um, the essay was to write about a famous Ohioan. Okay. And there was a list, so they got to choose which Ohioan they wanted to do. It was to be about 300 to 500 words. Wow. Per so essay. not a short essay. Right. It was <clears throat> quite lengthy. Sure. They had to research mm -hmm. and then um, write, write their essay. We went through the editing process and and it was quite lengthy and they were very excited about their products and the winner gets to become a legislator for the day wow. which means uh, they get to tour the state house they get to meet state representatives Neat. and senators and um, they're gonna have lunch with them I think a pizza party he said wow. and then the really cool thing is they get to go down on the floor and they're gonna have a mock legislative session. Wow. The kids participate. That's wonderful. So you had Representative Scott Lips come into your classroom to talk a little bit, I understand. Yes. And Scott is the one who's, you know, kind of running this contest, let's say. He's our legislator that mm -hmm. we're working with here. Tell me a little bit about his visit to the classroom. Well, it was great. The kids loved him. He was very personable. Um, he was funny. He told um, some cute little stories that um, the kids will probably could tell you about a few things. Sure, sure. But um, he told me he was really nervous about talking to the kids. Excellent. Well, let's talk to Casey and Lily, our fourth grade students who entered the Legislator for a Day contest. Lily, we'll start with you because ladies first. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about you know your essay and who did you write your essay on? I wrote my essay on Gordon Ray Roberts and he was um, a soldier. He served in the Army for 44 years, and he was in the Vietnam and Iraq War, and he's the youngest living recipient to have the Medal of Honor during the Vietnam War. That's very impressive. Very cool. Casey, who did you write your essay on? I wrote mine on Jeremiah Morrow, and when he was the governor, he helped. Well, he specialized in transportation, and he helped build canals and railways for Ohio. Very cool. Now, I understand Representative Scott Lips came to your classroom recently. Let's start with Lily. Lily, tell me something that you learned from Representative Lips. Um, I learned that he likes his job on Monday, he hates it on Tuesdays, and he's iffy on Wednesdays. Well, I'm sure, you know, everybody probably has tough days at work, and I, I bet what he deals with is tougher than most. <laughs> Casey, what stood out to you? I learned that when, like in the um, state building, they had an underground um, car garage where they have like tunnels. It, it's like top secret parking for the important people. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. And guys, before we, you know, jump out of here, tell me one thing. What was your favorite thing about this whole process, about writing the essay, doing the research, meeting Representative Lips? Um, I liked doing the research and finding a bunch of facts about people from Ohio. Great answer. What about you, Casey? I liked when Scott Lips came over and he like told us all the stories and stuff about his job. That's an awesome answer. Well, thank you for joining us today. This is their first television appearance, so we're so thrilled to have you on with us today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kelly. We really enjoyed our time with your students and in your classroom. You know, we really have an outstanding relationship with all of our county leaders and all our state leaders. And uh, Scott Lips, our state rep, and Senator Wilson, we have a marvelous relationship. They help us get extra money for parts and stuff like that. So thanks, Scott. We appreciate you being on the show. We also appreciate all you do for all those in Ohio. We need to get Scott on the show. We could do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can make that happen. Yeah. Anyway, Art Fest. Yes. Exciting. I am so excited about this event. It is the second annual Art Fest coming up June 15th. I had the opportunity to talk to Kim Lushy at Eves Inc. 
She's one of the chairs of the festival this year. Shall we go check it out? Let's do it. Hmm? All right, well, I'm with Kim Lushy at Eve's Inc. We are here to talk about not tattoos no. and not piercing, no. but Art Fest. We are very excited about Art Fest this year. It's going to be June 15. It's from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we have some really big news this year. Yes. We are going to be closing Main Street, which is very exciting. So all of South Main Street will be closed and be part of the festival. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting because really Springboro, they get to do that for Christmas in Springboro. Exactly. So now we're going to get a summer festival. We're going to get to hang out on Main Street, walk yeah. up and down the street, check out all the vendors. And, and it's not just artists, is no, it? No, we have so much going on this year. We have got children's activities for all ages from mm -hmm. toddlers on up. Um, we have got food trucks, food vendors. We have musicians and performers. We have Aerial Silks going to be set up, which is going to be amazing. And the entertainment goes all day. So we yes. don't think, you know, if you can't come by 5 p.m., all the entertainment's done. That isn't the case. We're going to have multiple places for the entertainers, multiple types of entertainment, and the entertainment will go all day. All day. Just like the food trucks. Yes. And we're going to have the community project again. I'm sure most of you have seen the colorful fence outside of Eve's Inc. Mm -hmm. We are going to be painting that white in the next couple weeks. And everybody in the community is going to be able to repaint it for next year. Awesome. I can't wait to see what the community comes up with. And we also have this year a fundraiser. Yes. Uh, yeah. The big like drum roll. I guess we don't have the mayor's drum roll to put in here, do we? <laughs> No, but the, the big breaking news is that at the end of the day on Art Fest Day, we are going to hold a farm to table dinner that we've called Dinner on Main. It's going to be right in the middle of Main Street as the street is still closed, of course. We're going to be serving a sit down dinner where everything basically is procured from local farms. So, you know, whether local produce, local meat, local honey, and we've even got a local chef to create it for you. Tickets will be going on sale soon. Uh, tickets are very limited, and the proceeds benefit two really worthy um, organizations in Springboro, one being the Springboro Arts Council, and the other this year being the Springboro Area Historical Society. We are very excited about this, not only to give back, but this is just something that it adds to the festival itself. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. It's going to be a really neat community event. We're going to do one long table down Main Street, so it really is going to be a community dinner all about Springboro, created by Springboro, and, and really to celebrate the history of the historic business district. Kim, I can't wait for Art Fest. I can't either. I mean, I know it was a huge success last year. I can only it imagine it's gonna what it's going to be. Bigger and better this year. I know they've got a lot more artists signed up, more entertainers, more food trucks, and we get to close Main Street. Yes, very excited. I mean, I can't wait. So June 15th, 11 to 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, I do know the other committee chairs have mentioned that we need volunteers for the day of the festival. So if you're interested in volunteering, please go to the Art Fest Facebook page. And you can find that it's Art Fest on Main, Correct. I believe, yes. on Facebook. And we'll have a sign up uh, system there for you. All right, well, we will see you at Art Fest yes, June 15th. Will. Cannot wait. And, uh, you know, let's see what Main Street has in store for us the rest of this year. Absolutely. Back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate all you, Julie and Marsha, have done for this festival. And we're so excited for the second annual Art Fest. Well, thank you, girls. I know all four of you aren't only charming, but you all four have given so much passion and so much of yourself to the community. Thank so you. things like that would not happen without your leadership. So thank all of you four girls for all you do. Thank you, thank you. Art Fest is blessed. We've yes. had a lot of fun putting this together this year and just pray for good weather. Yeah, oh yeah, just one more great thing in the borough. It is. Yeah. Oh, I hear a drum roll. Part two, meet your neighbor. Jason Bame is going to join us. And it's always good to have somebody that uh, just comes on sort of like a gunslinger and tells us things. And Jason is no exception. So let's go look and talk to Jason. Hmm? Jason Bain, Meet Your Neighbor, Part 2. Glad to have you on the show. Nice to meet you. Great. Thank you so much. Why don't you tell the audience just a little bit about yourself? Well, I am uh, 46 years old. Um, I work right down here in Springboro, so that's convenient. Yeah, I guess. Um, two kids. Uh, Mallory is nine. Jack is going to be 13. 
and my wife, Lori. Been married 19 years. Congratulations. So, Jason, where do you live at? Summit Point. All right. And you've been here how many years? Uh, 16. All right. Good. Well, we're glad to have you in the community. Me too. Well, why don't you tell us what, uh, what, what you do when you say you work here in Springboro? Where do you work at? Machine glass specialist. Mm -hmm. It's an uh, industrial quartz fabricator. You don't fix clocks by any chance? Do no, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Okay, well, the first lady broke her clock and was wanting to get a glass for it, so I just thought I'd... Triple C glass in Franklin, that's Triple great. C glass in Franklin? Yes. Got great information to go home with. All right, I'll be in good shape tonight. All right, thank you. Anyway, why don't you tell us about why you chose Springboro? What do we do good or what do we do bad? What can we do better? Well, we, I, uh, I grew up in Centerville, and then we... Um, I'd always lived in either Centerville, Miamisburg, West Carrollton, so I liked the area. Um, and we kind of moved to Springboro because we liked being out but close, if that makes sense, to having the amenities and but then still feeling like you're kind of out in the country, which isn't so much anymore because it's grown so fast. But uh, and then you know it just it was good community, good schools. I'm excited to see where the center of town's going. Oh, Performing Arts Center? Yeah, we really put a lot of, a lot of thought in that. A lot of people didn't like it because we spent money to do that. But, you know, when you want to control what your face of your city, the center of town, looks like, you've got to be able to spend the money and go out there and do what's got to be done. And the finished product is going to be magnificent. Yeah. And all the businesses will reap the harvest from it because it'll make their property values go up and make everybody's... And it, offers an amenity in the community. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the, the adjacent towns that um, we enjoy going to, they have somewhat of a center meeting point, and, you know, they're all uh, got shops or restaurants or something of that nature that, you know, attracts you. And that's what you want to do because it's fun to go up there and it's fun to, you know, kind of watch the cars go by and see all the people and, you know, yeah. that's what's... Well, I probably ought to make sure that you don't get in trouble. So you want to tell us a little bit about your wife? So she said, you talk about the kids, but you didn't talk about me. You want to say anything about your wife? Uh, she is the love of my life. There you go. Oh, yes. you, you just got an A-plus for I that. I did. I did. <laughs> um, she's a year younger than I am, so she's 45, and she is in pharmaceutical sales. Oh, okay. Yes, for uh, one of the major companies. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Or it's, not. A, it's okay. You said enough. That's okay. fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Well, all right. Well, you touch the bases and all that kind of stuff. So if you have any closing comments that you want to tell the audience, uh, now is your time. Yeah, let's just remember all those veterans on Memorial Day and remember what the day is for and get together with family and hang out. And, um, and especially remember these guys. Thank you for your service. Hey, thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. It's Jason. You see him out. Say hello. Mm -hmm. Thanks a million, Jason. Appreciate you being our Meet Your Neighbors segment. Well, Carrie, part two is almost gone. It really is. Take us home, Mayor. One more time. You know what? As I said before, this country, this community is so wonderful because we would not have what we have today if one for our veterans before us. Mm -hmm. And they have done so much for us. And I know that you always pat me on the back and other veterans on the back, and we do appreciate I, that. I try. I try. You know, I'm not a veteran, obviously, but um, I have family members and friends that are, and, and I am, you know, a, a patriotic gal. I bleed yes, red, white, and blue, and I love our country. I, I love our city. And, you know, it's just, it, we do need to take a moment to you know, pause and thank the men and women who have either served our country or are serving today. It's so important. It is. And that, in that vein, Memorial Day, we always have our parade, our 24th year this year. Wow. On May 27th at 2 p.m., we line up and we go off and we have a flyover. And then when we get done, and usually around 3, 3.05, we're in the cafeteria there. We have burgers. Supported by Wendy's, they donate them. Awesome. We have, and that's at the intermediate school. At the intermediate right? school, yeah, okay. we have dogs, we have cake, we have water and soft drinks, all the, all the good stuff for you that you need to eat. And anyway, it's a good thing to say hello to the veterans, mm -hmm. share with the community, and you're in and out of there in an hour and a half max, and that's a parade and everything. Great it's way to spend a Monday. Great way to spend Memorial Day. 
keeps you attuned to what's really going on around you. So as we've said before so many times, Carrie and I do this show. We're passionate about it. We love this show. It's for you, though. It's to showcase our community. So if you have anything constructive or otherwise, you want to get a hold of us, send us a line. You can reach either one of us at mayor at cityofspraymoral.com with your you want to be on the show, etc. Let us know. But until then, we will see you. Have a wonderful May and June. Don't forget concerts on Park in July, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.